Hi, it's T with T Quilts, and I'm going to be making optional blocks that we are doing for our quilt gill. And I am making the chevron block. It's actually October's block, which was due last Thursday, a week ago. But I am late. <laughs> so uh, you have like one month where you can submit the block late. So I am going to complete this block, and then we are going to deliver it in November. So the items you'll need for this block is very simple. You're going to need two two and one half inch strips. You're going to need a light color strip and then a dark color strip. Now my quilt gill is doing fall fabrics. So any light color fall fabric and a dark color fall fabric. So this is what I chose to use. So very simple process to start. I have a whole two and a half inch strip and I am going to place them right sides together and then I am going to sew completely down the same one quarter inch on one long side I will do that and then I will come back so I have sewn my strip set and then I went ahead and pressed the seam toward the dark fabric it doesn't really matter on this one which way you press your fabric so I just like to press it toward the dark whenever I have a light and dark combination. So next, what we want to do is cut this strip set into four and a half inch segments. You may need to measure your strip set to see what size to cross cut your blocks, but in this case, they are going to be four and a half inches. So you can use a regular ruler to cross cut your strips into four and a half inches. But what I like to use is the June Taylor Shape Cut. And I'm just using this piece of white here, hoping that you can see the lettering. And this ruler actually has slots that start at 0 and go all the way to 12. So you can actually cut a 12-inch piece of fabric in any increments of a half inch. So what we want to do is put the 0 line on the edge where we want to cut off the excess salvage. And then we want to cut these into four and a half. So I'm going to cut into four and a half. And then another four and a half would be nine. So I'll be cutting at four and a half and nine with this particular ruler. So let me get it set up. I'm actually going to just take my strip set and actually fold it in half. And I've got one fabric that's a little longer than the other. So I am just going to bring it down to the selvage so that it meets selvage to selvage. Okay. So what you want to do is place this zero line here either on the edge or you can place it on your stitch line. I'm just going to place it on my edge. Is where I like to put it and I want to make sure that the zero line will cut off the salvage I don't want to be out here in the salvage because I don't want the salvage in my block and then from there we are just going to put our rotary cutter down here at the bottom the slots are a little wider and so you are able to get into the slot and then it narrows so that you're cutting a more accurate cut so I'm in the slot and now I just want to go up at zero what zero did was just squared up the pieces and if I hold this and just pull that out you can now see that my pieces are now squared up at the zero now I need to cut in the four and a half and the nine and I've got the camera right in front of my cutting area so it's going to look a little awkward and then in nine So when I lift that, because I had two pieces, I now have two of the actual squares. So now these are complete squares, and I actually have a total of four. 
and I need nine for this particular project. So I am going to bring this over and cut again. So I have eight. I want to make sure that I'm very close to zero where I'm just shaving off very little. Four and a half. And then nine again. And then I have another four block units here. Okay, so now I have this one last piece. I, I have eight of them cut already, and now I need to cut this last one. So I'm just going to go in and put like my two inch line in the middle, since I've now have the seam open up and I can see it. Slide down so that I know I have my zero line covered. And now I'm going to go ahead and cut another four and a half inch square. And so I am cutting at an angle so it's a little bit awkward for me. And so on this piece, I just go ahead and just rip this off. And then I keep this either to make another two and a half inch square or I'll put it into my strings and crumbs. And now we have all of our pieces. And the chevron block is very simple. You want to just start every block the exact same way. So we have light here at the top and we want to make like a rail fence. So we are just going to alternate the blocks and then light back at the top again. On your alternate rows you want to turn it so that you're still making the rail fence And now what you actually have is a nine patch block. So again, it's going to be very simple. I'm going to start by seaming the blocks in this column. So I'm just going to lay these pieces on top, like so. And then I pick up my stack. And now I take these to the sewing machine knowing that I'm going to be stitching on this side. So I will chain piece this unit and I will come back. So on this particular side, I have gone and sewed a quarter inch down each block. And how you do that is when I made my stack, I had them already placed right sides together. So I just started with the first pair. I stitched it. And then I just added a few spacing stitches in between. And then I added my second piece. And then I added my third piece. And what happens is you've got a piece that's completely together so you don't have to worry about rearranging your pieces accidentally. And when you open them up, you can lay your black block back out to make sure that everything is still lined up correctly, that you indeed sewed everything correct. Now, if you have something that's a lot more complicated, you may want to put a piece of tape or a pen in your upper left hand corner so you know that that's the top. It just depends on how complicated the block is when I use that technique. Next thing I want to do is pick up my next column. So all I'm going to do is just pick these up. I'm going to just place them in my right hand so I know that this is my left side. I'm then also going to pick up my left pieces and then I'm going to go and sew these pieces onto the sides of each unit. So when I get to my sewing machine, I will just pick up the first piece, flip it over, and sew down. And so I'm going to do that for all three rows. So I will do that and come right back. I have completed sewing my other column, row of um, blocks to the right side, 
and so now I just flip those over again you can do a check to make sure that everything is still orientated in the proper direction and now we're actually going to press I'm going to go to my iron and I'm actually going to press these seams I'm just going to press one row to the your top and bottom row to the right so that the seams are going to the right and then I'm going to press my middle row so that the seam comes back towards the left. So I will do that and come back. Block, because I don't know how they wanted the blocks pressed. It doesn't state. I just pressed my blocks one direction on one row, back the other way. If you're making a complete quilt top by just adding blocks, then you may want to flip your seam allowances opposite directions or you may want to press your seams open and that's probably what I would do so I wouldn't have to worry about how they're going to line up later. But let's go ahead and finish this block. We've got three separate rows here. They're not sewn together but they're still chained together. And so all I'm going to do now is just flip these up and I have my seams going in the opposite direction so they'll just come in you just put a put the edges together and just slightly pull back and that seam is going to lock because you've got seams pressed in the opposite directions and then I would do that for both spots I would make sure that I put a little pin there to hold that and then I will sew my quarter inch seam and I'm going to do that for both of these seams and then I will come back with the finished block I'm back with my completed block and I wanted to tell you that if you're making this for an entire quilt you just continuously make the exact same block over and over again and the only thing that's different is if you made this block and you went to put the same block right here it wouldn't line up because you have this light piece going across again instead of coming down like it should all you're doing when you put this piece over here is that you are rotating it one quarter turn so that that piece is now going up and down and I know it's very difficult for you to see this here without me having multiple blocks so what I'm going to do is put up a blocks are placed on the board from the people that already turned their blocks in and then I will also add a sh copy of the instructions in this video as well just stop the screen on your video player and then just take a screen snapshot if you want these instructions but again this is a very simple block took very limited resources and you can have a beautiful quilt in no time at all so that's it for this video I will see you next time bye bye everybody Thank you.